Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I am here again after a couple weeks of Christmas and New Year's extravaganza. <laughs> um, my husband and kids ha were home for a, a week and a half. My kids are still home, but I have more time now with my husband back at work, so he's he's at work. My kids are in the other room watching a show, so hopefully we have time to get through this. Um, when I last left you, I was focusing on Snow Queen by Shannon Wasilek or Shannon Christine Designs and I was hoping to get other things done when I finished her but those things didn't happen because I didn't finish her until I think December 30th so but I did get her finished so I was a little sad that I didn't get any Christmas stitching worked on and I think that helped teach me a lesson going forward into 2019 to just have fun with my whips, to not focus on finishing things. It has been fun, a fun recent tradition to finish a fancy lady every year. I finished Royal Holiday last year and I was planning to finish Snow Queen this year. I'm ho I was hoping to finish Stargazer next year because she's kind of a smallish one. But this, this project at the end of the year just kind of taught me I don't really want to put that pressure on myself I'd rather have the freedom to work on whatever I want um, at certain times of the year so um, I missed out on some of my Christmas stitching because I wanted to finish this so much and it was kind of pressure that I put on myself and part pressure of all of you wanting me to finish it so a little bit of both but needless to say I did finish it I didn't do any fully finishing because I wanted to jump right into January stitching plans and with my family still home I just it's just too much to figure out stuff like that so um, maybe when the kids go back to school I'll spend some time measuring and figuring out finishing options for this for the Little House Needleworks things that um, I've finished seven of now and that little pillow, <laughs> the skater's pillow for Christmas. I still haven't finished that yet. But anyways, this is what Snow Queen looked like last time you saw her. And here she is now. All finished. So she is done, minus the hair, <laughs> on 14 count light blue Ada that I had in my stash from my grandma. Um, when I saw this being stitched by somebody on Instagram, I was like, okay, I need that. I need that right now. <clears throat> it's, at the time, my daughter was really into Frozen, loved Elsa, and she also, her favorite color is purple. So this kind of combined purple and Frozen in the same thing, and I knew I had to get it. So I went down to Barnes & Noble, tried to find the magazine. It wasn't there yet, so I had to wait a week or two to get it, because uh, it's a British magazine. Um, and got it started it right away and I wanted to I did I could have ordered fabric that would have been allowed for better margins but I had this I had two packages of this in my stash it was the perfect color and I'm just too much of a frugal thrifter I guess <clears throat> to go buy something new and expensive when I have something already that was free <laughs> so um, I could maybe sew on some fabric to make sure it fits in a frame or I could just mount it against like a board and like double like mount it to a plank or something I don't really know what I'm gonna do um, I could even make it into a pillow um, honestly I haven't even measured it to see if it would fit in a standard frame so once once the kids go back to school and life gets back to normal a little bit more I will take the time to work on that so Here's what she looks like. She's got, um, the lighting is a little bit not great. This is a, a, a richer blue than it ever shows up in in pictures. But there's Krynik icicles on the tree. The tree was a little bit of a nightmare because it has three shades of, it's got white and two shades of really pale blue. It looks cool, um, but it was hard to do, so I definitely had to use my highlighter for that um, as well as in here to get the shading figured out properly and I would have left off the tree in the 
the ground, but my daughter wanted it there, so I left it in. And it does look cool. It gives it a nice um, setting, you know, especially the ground. She's actually standing on something, and a lot of fancy ladies don't really have that context. So that was kind of fun. Kind of a cool feature. She's got holly berries in her, um, in her hair. I don't know that the lighting is all that great here. And this is a new iPad too, so I'm seeing how it works. So if you don't like it, I might go back to the other one. <laughs> um, but she's got French knots on her shawl and lots of beads elsewhere. Her, her um, magic is beads and crinic little stars and X's and backstitching. The, the, pick, the color is just not, not what it is in real life. It is much richer and warmer in real life. I don't know if there's anything to do about that. These down here um, have some silver beads with silver crinic in between, which is kind of hard to see, but in real life, she just sparkles so much. Lots and lots of beads, lots and lots of crinic. She's got little star bits on her dress. Um, I wish the lighting were a little better to show you a little bit. It's a little bit more warm in person. So just come visit me and you can see it in person. <laughs> so there's that. Um, finally finished her. It feels good to be done. Um, and it also feels good to be able to move on and work on other things. I'm really excited this coming year to spend some time on ideally everything that I have. Um, at least a little bit of time on everything. So I have lots of fuzz on her because I would sometimes work on her while my cat's on my lap and so then I get cat hair on her. So when I go to finish her, I'll have to make sure I get all the fuzz, <laughs> fuzzes off. I might actually give her a wash too because she has a lot of white on her. So we'll see about that. So Snow Queen, check, she's finished. By the time I finished her, I had a day and a half left of 2018 and I knew I wanted to make a new start but I also knew I had hoped to finish the story time sampler, which did not happen. Um, but because I only had a day and a half, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to finish the story time sampler in a day and a half. And I had been wanting to work on my diamond painting all fall. And so I thought, you know what? I might be able to finish my diamond painting in a day and a half. So that's what I pulled out. And it, I didn't finish it until the first, but... I got it done. So this is what that looks like looked like the last time I showed you. And here it is now. And that was a lot of fun to finish. I worked on this corner over here and I just pulled off all the paper and did the corner in one big chunk. Color by color. Started with the black because that was the most common and then just filled in all the other colors. And I think that turned out pretty nicely. Um, I, I've, I've seen a couple different ways of people finishing these. I've, th I've seen people find like poster frames and cover the edges with washi tape. I've seen people, um, so, so Libby, Savannah, she mounted hers on a canvas um, and that looked really cool too. So I'll have to again measure this and see what might be the best solution for me. And that probably also won't happen until the kids go back to school and I'll have some time to think about fin fully finishing things. Um, and then I spent some time, very little time on my new start. I already had the fabric prepped and ready to go. Um, I had a, a, a kit that I received for Christmas, which I'll show a little bit of haul at the end. Um, and so I'll show you which one it, it was that almost made my new, my new Year's Eve new start instead of this one. But this one won in the end. So this is, I'm gonna get the charm back down to the bottom. This one is Just Nan High Hopes, which is a cute little one with a cat and lots of flowers in the garden. And what is fun is although it calls for, you know, all the DMCs, no, no fancy floss, it does call for pearl cotton for the white, which is kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, it came with the charm that it, it needs the cute little birdhouse charm. Um, lots of uh, there's a few specialty stitches in here, so I, that's going to be kind of fun. I got literally <laughs> the tiniest tiniest start. I know some people have had smaller starts. That's a little bit. 
it's a richer green. Um, this is the olive green Zweigart. Again, the colors are too cool today. It's overcast, but <clears throat> um, this is all there was of that color right in the middle. So, and I had a small little string on my bobbin, so I figured out oh, I'll just do that. Call it good. That's a start. So this can come out um, whenever I have like themes with animals or gardens or flowers or whatever. Like I'll I'll bring this out again. Um, but I was excited to see that there's some one over one stitching and some specialty stitches, and so that'll be fun. That'll it was this was my tiny New Year's Eve new start, the last start I will have for personal stitching um, until 2020. And when I was done with my diamond painting, um, my son got one for Christmas because he had put one on his wish list that my mother-in-law got him and decided, because he decided he wanted to work on it too. So I thought I would share, he, he said it was fine if I shared with you um, his diamond painting. So his is going to be a dragon. It's got the, sh the cover on it still. So he loves dragons. And so we found this one. This is what the... The little picture looks like um and he has worked in this corner so far so he's gotten he's doing it he's doing a good job he is eight and he he has good fine motor skills he loves legos and drawing and different things so that's as far as he's gotten so far and he's really enjoying it and he's doing good and he can do it by himself he doesn't need my help to get things out i i set him up with it at the beginning and then, um, and now he can do it on his own. So that's fun. And as there's progress, maybe I'll continue to share it with you if you guys care. So let me know. Um, over the course of life, I went ahead and worked on September by the Little House Needleworks. Not as much as I had hoped, um, as quickly as I'd hoped because valet pickup for the kids stopped not that long after my last video and didn't get it done then and then the whole holidays there wasn't a ton of time to do travel stitching so eventually I finished this it was in the end of the new year I finished this I can't remember what day I can check Instagram but this is what that looked like last time and this is what it looks like finished um I'm using all the called for threads that came in the kit and I think it turned out pretty cute I was the green and the old ye old gold are very similar in color so where they touch in these leaves there's not a lot of contrast but it is what it is <laughs> so there's September so if and I have all the all the first six of the year are here so here's January that are done so um, Again, if I get a finishing bug later this month, I might go ahead and work, finish these up into little, I'm just gonna wrap them around foam core and put them on an easel. And may I may put them here just to show in my videos um, or put them next to my bed up, upstairs in the, on my nightstand, I'm not really sure. But I think it would be cute to share with you guys because you guys appreciate it. So that would be fun to get these fully finished um, before the end of the month so then I can start displaying them every month and as I finish them maybe I can get an, get them finished quick enough that all of this month can be displayed in its month because I can I'm working on October now but then I could go back and do January and uh, July and August and then um, October November December so then I could have everything done and they take me two or three weeks it seems like to work on them in the car um so i should be able to have them all ready to display on their months since i'm already six months ahead with these ones being done so that that's a, that's a plan i have this is where how far i've gotten on october in the little bits i've had since i finished september I was gonna go go on to December, but by the time I finished September, Christmas was over. So I just went ahead and went on to October. So October looks like this. So there's no house, which I'm kind of thankful for. I that's another. I wanted to work on December, but December had a house in it, so I'm kind of glad 
that I'm moving to one without a house because I'm not really a fan of these little houses. Like, they're cute, but they, I don't know. I like the more natural things than houses. So, worked on a leaf and some stems and just a little bit of the, um, the fence because that's the color I had on my needle and I'm, I went with it. Um, I'm excited to see the pumpkins take shape too. I think I'll stitch the pumpkins vertically to try to get some lines of variegation that are vertical to make them look like the pumpkin stripes. So that's the plan. Although the, the, the orange floss I don't think is exceptionally variegated, um, but maybe it'll show up a little bit. Um, also, let's, let's show this one now. I don't have the pattern out here, but you've seen it. This is, um, Storytime Sampler. I have worked on this a teeny bit here and there around the house in home travel stitching for when my husband reads to the kids or occasionally watching football or hockey games, which I don't need my undivided attention. Um... Not a whole lot of time on this, and towards the end of la la last year, I was using Snow Queen in that capacity, because she's on Ada, and at the end I was just filling in white. And so I just took her with me to, when we were reading and watching, I just worked on Snow Queen instead. So this one really got neglected, but I should finish it here into the new year, not too long from now. So this is what this looked like last time. And... Here it is now. And I have my needle minder kind of in the middle now because I wanted it closer to where I was and I don't want it on this side because when I stitch in hand, this would weigh down my fabric too much. I have to have it on this side of my hand um, when I'm stitching. So here are the two I'm working on simultaneously. Borders are done. White is done. The two shades of like white, yellow and tan, those are done. Dark gray is done. And I'm working on dark brown. Oh, dark brown. Let the light blue color is done too. So I'm doing one color at a time on both The Little Women and Christmas Carol. So hopefully that won't take too much longer to finish. I don't pro make any promises because this year I'm trying to be casual. <laughs> no major goals for finishing. I just want to have fun with my stitching. And so when this one is finished, I'll work on my Adventure Awaits Sal by the Caterpillar Cross Stitch and get that one finished as well. And then figure out what I wanna do for my home travel stitching at that point. So, um, <clears throat> when the new year came along, I had the opportunity to finally start my two new temperature patterns. So I did that. Um, the temperature balloons I was able to start at the end of December. So I worked on this. I made made the cloud ahead of time. So I was technically able to start this one in 2019. Temperature quilt. I still have not received my fancy floss that I ordered for the sashing. So I'm hoping it'll be here this week um, so I can get started on that. But I was hoping to get that started before the end of the year, which since it didn't come, I was kind of at the mercy of the system, I guess. <laughs> And since this is an Etsy shop model of sorts, it's not technically personal stitching, so it doesn't count for no starts 2019. I could not start this until the second because I didn't have the sashing color available. It was cut, ready to go. And I got my first color uh, on the second because I like to wait a day and check my phone for the previous day's final highs and lows just to make sure it's 100% accurate because like forecasted temperatures don't necessarily end up exactly what it was so um I've been enjoying these I did not stitch on anything today yet so this is reflecting through Saturday because I stitched yesterday to get it caught up so this is what my little temperature quilt looks like now this is the dark blue um, my lows have been just a couple shades of purple 41 and 43, 42, those shades have been my lows. It did get kind of warm. It got like 63, 66, I think, this day. Um, but these darker ones were 50 something, 52 maybe. So they were chilly, 
for Southern California standards. Um, so, so far that's coming along really cute. And these are both 28 count even weave um, one over one. So I got them off. I got a package of fabric at Hobby Lobby and got them both on this out of the same fabric because I'm doing them one over one. And here's my balloon with the cloud that I stitched in 2018 and then the first five the first five temperatures of my balloon. So that's been fun. And really looking forward to that. I, I don't know if this one might end up being my travel home travel piece, but probably not unless I make a kit out of them for um, taking along, which I might do. If I, if I pull all the colors ahead of time um, and then have like a card of colors with with my patterns um i can look up the temperatures every day and then whenever i do get home travel time i can just grab my stuff and figure out what color goes where while i'm listening to reading or whatnot and i i could do that i worked on this while we watched lady and the tramp the other day with my kids because i've seen that before but it had been a long time so i wanted to watch it again but it's since it's an older movie, it, it moved slower than modern cartoons and things, so it was easy to stitch and still follow along. So I worked on that during that movie, and it worked fine. So it, it could be something that this turns into my home travel piece once the other cells are finished, so stay tuned. So that's all last year's stuff and a little bit at the beginning of this year so now i can start officially into january plans or january um what i worked on in january and then i can go forward with plans for this next week and what i've acquired over christmas um <clears throat> so january 1st was a first of the month so that means i worked on my husband's piece which is the simpsons Normally full coverage, but I'm not doing the white background. Not happening. <laughs> I'm doing this 40 count vertical one over one half stitches, so it's really tiny. I didn't get a lot of time, especially since my husband was home and it's currently still a surprise. So, but I did get a little bit of time at the end of the day, and this is what it looked like last time. And Here's where I got to. I got a little bit done on the outlining with a dark navy. So um, that's the color that was on my needle and I just went with it and did a little bit, maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, I'm hoping sometime this month I would like to spend some more time on the pattern, charting or recharting the pattern on, on my software. Because I don't like having to stop at the page break. Um, that's not my style. I like to, especially when I'm working cross country, I want to follow the color down. Like if I'm over here, I want to keep going down this ridge. I don't want to have to like stop and then pick it up over here, which is what I did, and come down here. And then I have to stop because I this is where the page ends, you know? So I, I want to finish or work more on recharting the original pattern, which had a lot of technical issues, so that I can enjoy it more and stitch where I want to stitch, especially on 40 count, one over one, it you can do a million stitches with one length of thread. So stopping and only being able to work in this tiny little section is kind of frustrating, because um, I know I could do so much more if it was charted. So that's what I hope to get to again when there's more me time at home. <laughs> I have some time because I can't do it when my husband's home. I could maybe do a little bit while my kids are here, but they tend to go a little wild when I'm trying to do stuff on my own in my computer room. <laughs> so anyways, the second was my son's piece, Touchdown, which you can still find this old flyer on. I found mine on Etsy. You can still find them on Etsy, probably eBay also. But usually in my description box, I link the Etsy listing the Etsy search for touchdown cross stitch and there's usually one or two or three like 
still available for a very reasonable price. <clears throat> Although I'm not sure how many of you really are interested in stitching football players, but <clears throat> you never know. So this one is my conversion to John Elway and Charles Woodson of the Broncos and Raiders. This is what that looked like before. <clears throat> and this is where I got to. So not a lot of stitching happened. I got started on his skin. Well, actually I finished the string I had here. What I did first is I'm planning to rechart his number from 80 to 24 because that's the number Charles Woodson wore on as when he was a Raider. So um, I spent some time penciling in on the chart how I want the 24 to look. And then since this color was on my needle still, I went ahead and um, did the rest of this color wherever it appeared within the bounds of my new number shape. And then I went ahead and just worked on some skin. So I, the skin's not done. He looks a little weird right now because he's still half there. <laughs> but I'm happy I got the number charted. And again, this is a similar where it's a lot warmer in person. But I think it's coming along. So next next month I will be able to work more on just stitching because the recharting has been accomplished. So that's that feels good. Um, so hoping, hoping to make more obvious progress on that next time to share with you. Then I started in on Waterfall in Yosemite, which is going to be my focus piece this year um, and potentially for the rest of forever until it's done because I really want this on my wall. It's something my husband would like on the wall. A lot of my full coverage pieces he wouldn't want on the wall because they're girly. <laughs> So this one and my grapes piece, which is like a still life. He's not a, he's not a fan of still life. He prefers like mountainous scenes, but the still life one, I think he would allow the, the grapes golden kite. But a lot of them that I like, I'm stitching for me and I don't ever intend for them to be finished because they're just for the pure pleasure of stitching. And they're ladies in fancy dresses. They're not necessarily meant to be displayed in my home. Although if I ever do finish them, you better believe I'm displaying them in my home. I <laughs> just don't know where. Um, this one for sure could get a prominent spot, so I want to finish it. I'm working in the sky, and I'm planning to give it six or seven days every month to get it done. Um, because I have these, like, single day projects here and there, like all the personal, all the family pieces, it's, it's not going to get a full six or seven days in one chunk. Um... Today's the seventh, so that aligns with my birthday. Um, so I'm gonna take a break from it for today. I had originally planned for it to be in a four-day chunk and then a three-day chunk later in the month, but I'm really actually enjoying working on it right now. So I, I switched it out right before this. I filmed this to put. My, I worked on it for four days. I'm gonna take a break today, work on my letter S fairy, and then I'm gonna spend the next three days on this also so it'll just have one day off with my with my project and then finish out and I think that'll actually be better than sp having two chunks sp spread apart in the month because then I can work on it all at once at the beginning of the month and I won't see it again till the beginning of the next month so it'll have a longer stretch of not working on it which I think will help me want to work on it again just to not feel like I'm working on it too much if I have spread out my chunks on it I might feel like this one again like every month is already a little bit frequent for me so twice in a month I think would be too much so I'm gonna make it more or less one big chunk of six or seven days minus the minus my piece that's gonna get stuck in there so anyways if that makes any sense I'm sorry <laughs> it just doesn't make sense this is what it looked like last time and here is what it looks like now I, I'm not working down here. I'm just going to put these off to the side right now because I really want to finish this, the top row of this guy. And it's getting closer to touching. I managed to finish this column 100% and this top um, box is finished. So this a lot of this right here is, is the color I'm currently on my needle. So that the next time I work on this, I'll be able to fill in a lot more boxes completely um, as I work down this column. And then these are almost touching these ones on this side. So it's right here is a page break. 
So I can't see these stitches on this page that I'm working on right now. So pretty soon I'll start touching and connecting where these two pages meet. So that'll be really fun. So I'm actually really enjoying this. Um, it's blues and whites, so it's it's soothing um, and kind of mindless because they're big blocks of color. I'm working in columns feathering out into the following, into the adjoining columns if the color keeps going. So if the color stops at the column, I won't keep going, but if it keeps going past the column, I'll just keep going until it stops and then come back. Because I'm, these are full crosses on 18 counts, so I'm doing leg, 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 until that color stops and then, you know, the, the other half stitch back all the way to the beginning. Um, so it works really easy to do it that way. Um, and my mind works really well in columns. So I'm really happy with how this is coming and I'm looking forward to getting it back out again tomorrow <laughs> to see um, how much more I can get in that column before I put it away for this month. <clears throat> and I am currently, I updated this last night and somehow I got off on my numbers. So I thought I was at 102 blocks complete actually 101 so I don't know I don't know what I was counting before but currently 10.67 percent complete <laughs> a long way to go but that's fun to keep track of like that that's Rita Marie's style of tracker and so there's more information on that on her channel I'll, I'll link her below too so today I get to work on my Nora Corbett fairy because today is my day to work on something here is where she is at right now. So this is going into plans for this coming week. This is where she is. So likely work on wing and S. That's probably what I'll work on today. So, oh yeah, and I want to fix her eye. I'll probably I'll probably do that before I forget about it. I want to make her eye the same lighter brown, medium brown as is the outlining her skin. This is the color it is right now. I think I'll make it this color. It's a little bit too dark in my opinion. So, that's that. She'll get some love today, hopefully. I have a thing tonight, a meeting tonight, so <clears throat> hopefully I'll have time to get to this before um, I go. Sometime this afternoon, hopefully. If editing doesn't take too long. And then I'll work on Waterfall in Yosemite for three more days. And then the 11th is my new daily piece which is taking the, t taking the place of Snow Queen, which had been my daughter's piece. So now I will be working on Quick Stitch Iris by Heaven and Earth Designs. This is a Josephine Wall crop from one of her bigger pieces. I'll be doing this for my aunt. So I'll give this one day on the 11th. And I'm doing this in diagonal columns, um, cross country within the column. So that's how far I am now. This is on 25 count, one over one, full crosses. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think right around here is with the first flower starting. So um, that should be fun to start seeing that. So we'll see, we'll see how far I get in one day. <laughs> full coverage isn't the best to do on a day. Um, a one day plan, which is, I hesitated doing that, but it's for somebody else, so it makes more sense that I do that one than something else. So I went with it. And then my next three-day rotation will be Winter Queen. And that's by Mirabilia. She was a fairly recent start um, this past year. So I'll work on her for three days, which will move me into Monday. So by the time I ideally will make my next video on Monday, I probably will still have one day left to work on her because I usually don't get stitching time before my video, usually just after. So this is where she's at now. And I, as I said before, I started in the middle and worked my way quickly to the top. So this, this time I will spend some time on her face, getting her looking more human. <laughs> So that's where she's at now. Hopefully that'll be a lot of fun to get her, make some progress on her. 
And I believe that is all of my plans. So now I have haul. I got a little bit, I bought one thing and I received a few presents for Christmas. So I have some things coming in the mail as well, but they're not here yet. So you will have to see those later. And I need to, I need to surge that <laughs> before too much more time passes. Maybe when I get this out again, I'll take the time to surge those edges. Okay, so I, yeah, that's all I have to show you plans-wise and whip-wise. So if you don't like haul, thank you for watching. <laughs> but I have a few things to show you. Not a, not a ton. I have been watching my unicorn chart, one of my unicorn charts, I guess, on eBay for a while now. Um, I have another one that's now my new unicorn chart. But this is one that I had had on my wish list for probably 10 years and maybe more. No one ever got it for me. And eventually I noticed it was no longer available on US sites. It was only available on a UK site, which I thought was a little weird. But still, again, nobody got it for me, probably because it was from a UK site. Um, and then eventually I realized once I got into floss tube and, and the stitch, stitching community that this designer had passed away and no one had picked up her designs, so they were all out of print and really hard to find. So it was no longer on my wish list because I knew no one would be able to find it. And I had been watching it on eBay for a while. It's only available in a kit and they were going for over a hundred dollars, 150, more, 180. Not a chance in the world would I ever spend that much money. So eventually I found one for 35, free shipping. And I said, okay, it was an auction. Um, so I put in 35 with no higher bid. So that was, that was plenty. I didn't, it was not that much more than it would have been originally, probably 25, 2025 originally. So I thought 35 for this type of thing is not bad. Um, and no one outbid me. So I got it. This is Elsa Williams summer music. And I always have enjoyed the look of this. It's, I, li I like music um, and I like flowers. The more I looked at it more recently, I, I'm not super fond of this area where it's like a lot of backstitching and the colors aren't necessarily flowing that well in my opinion. But I will wait and see when I get going on it. Like I like this area and the butterflies and everything. So it's just this bigger mass that I'm not fond of. So I might do some adjusting at some point when I get to that point, but it's a full kit. It was opened, which is probably why it was so cheap, but everything's in here. Um, possibly not a needle, but I've got needles. Oh no, there is a needle. Yeah, still, still has a needle even. So it's got all the threads and Ada. So I have it. <laughs> so I have that. Um, my other unicorn chart is from Sandy Seasons. No, it's called Sandy Seasons by Seba Designs. And that's another one. Seba Designs is no longer designing. Their distributors are no longer distributing. So you really can't find it. Um, it was available on one site, but it came with a kit with all the silks and everything. And I was planning to just use Victorian mottos or something with it. And I don't want the kit with silks. so. It was way too expensive for what I wanted. Um, so that one is still un unclaimed and it's not like such a passion that I'm willing to pay whatever for it. So I'll just bide my time and if I ever come across it, I'll try to get it, but it is what it is. <laughs> so the things I got for Christmas, I received from Dawn, uh, Frosty X-Stitch an Alps calendar, which is really, really pretty. We love, like I said, with that um, waterfall in Yosemite, we love um, mountain scenes in our house and calendars often have mountain scenes. So this is perfect. So thank you, Don. That was a fun Christmas present. <clears throat> and Rita Marie from Norway sent me a little Christmas present too. She made me a bracelet. Isn't that pretty? So she made this. So very pretty, thank you. And then she also sent me 
hand dyed fabric. And again, it's warmer in person, but it looks like 18 count. And I had a, a pattern I got from my mother-in-law that I was hoping would fit on this. It's not quite big enough because the, the pattern is really long and skinny. It's, it would be the right height, but it's not the right length. And I was hoping, well, maybe I could just crop part of the pattern, but it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite work. <clears throat> this is the one I'm showing. I got um, Katia di Natale, which is like Christmas carols by Al Alessandra Adelaide. And I was hoping to change the snowflakes from gold to white and do it on blue. <laughs> Can you see how perfect that would be? <clears throat> and I also got the etoile thread. This is all kind of together. I was kind of hoping this would work, but it didn't. The DMC etoile I got from my mother-in-law. So these are all the sparkly DMCs that just came out. And they're very, very soft. So I'm excited to try those, but I was hoping that I could do this with these. Only it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> so I'll have to find something else to use this on. But don't, Rita, I love this, it's really pretty. Um, so I am definitely gonna find something to use that for. Just not this one. Because I was hoping, well, maybe it could go to here and just wind up and just not do this part. But the fabric, even with like a one inch border, would, would go to like here. And that's not, that wouldn't quite work. I couldn't, I couldn't budge that. So this was one of the patterns I got from my mother-in-law, along with these threads. And she also got me a Four Seasons Sampler by Jeanette Douglas. I've never had a Jeanette Douglas before, so this is the first for me as well. She's got lots of specialty threads and Gloriana's. So this is one that I was really tempted to want to try to start by the end of the year, but she calls for a million, like everything is silk pretty much. Um, so there's lots of things to get in here. I don't, any of the solid silk, I'm gonna just convert myself, um, but I do wanna buy the Gloriana's. Like these, um, border threads and like this one that's one thread and this is one thread this is one thread highly variegated so i'm definitely getting those so it'll take some time to gather supplies for this so this will be a 2020 start probably <clears throat> and she also gave me a, my first mill hill kit buttons and beads i really really like this one it comes with on a square of perforated paper and all the, th the beads and even a little button I didn't, I mean, I know it's called buttons and beads, buttons, but I didn't realize that there was this cute little flower button in here. So that's really cute. Um, this one almost took my New Year's Eve new start away from the Just Nan one, cause it's a kit, so it's all here. Um, but then since I didn't have very much time and I would have had to sort the thread, I figured I'll go ahead and just do Just Nan because I can pull the thread from my bobbins and it's a lot easier. So this one is still waiting to start, but I love this. So this is also like <clears throat> my, my goal is kind of, of new, getting new patterns is kind of like trying one from each designer. So, so far I've got, you know, Alessandra Adelaide, just uh, Jeanette Douglas, Mill Hill kit, Just Nan, I've got all these new, like one from all these new places. So that's really fun. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> we made it guys. Um, <clears throat> so looking forward to stitching this year and taking a more casual approach to my craft, not being super stressed out about it. I wanna have a more relaxed rotation and try to hit all of my projects in 2019. Um, that would be nice when I'm planning to kind of take note of which ones I still need to get to and try to find a spot for all of them. Um, and just to have fun with it. So I'm not planning to like aim for a lot of finishes because if I finish too many things, I'm gonna wanna get the itch to start and I am not letting myself start fun projects. <clears throat> until 2020 and I have quite a few that I think I want to start so um, 
I'll need to find fabric for this too. This Four Seasons one and this one. So throughout the course of the year, I might think about that to like start kitting these up um, just so that they're ready to go. Um, but in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful January, a good start to the year, and I hope you enjoy your stitching and whatever your adventures are in that regard. And in the meantime, I will hopefully see you next week and happy stitching. Bye.